Hello there, I'm Richard Cowart, a principal with the Regulatory Assistance Project. I'm here with my colleague, Nancy Seidman, a senior advisor at RAP. Over the past year or so, the Regulatory Assistance Project has been working on projects in a few states to help develop clean heat standards. This video will help explain a few concepts about clean heat standards. First, what is a clean heat standard? The clean heat standard is a performance standard requiring fossil fuel heat providers, such as gas utilities, fuel oil, and propane companies to deliver a gradually increasing percentage of low emission heating services to their customers. A clean heat standard resembles a renewable portfolio standard, which is a program in more than 30 states and requires electric utilities to provide increasing percentages of renewable power like wind and solar to their electricity supply. Several states also have performance standards for energy efficiency, which has elements similar to a clean heat standard. Customers' options for cleaner heat range from energy efficiency to weatherization to heat pumps and low emission fuels. Since many of these options can't happen unless homeowners and businesses install them, the clean heat standard is designed to help customers choose and install low emission heating options. In short, a clean heat standard is a big deal and will require a lot of people's efforts to ensure its success. Why do we need a clean heat standard? Massachusetts has ambitious goals to reduce climate pollution and to improve energy equity. A clean heat standard can be a powerful tool towards meeting both of those goals. In order to deliver large greenhouse gas savings from residential and commercial buildings, communities need a policy driver, much like a clean heat standard. We've looked at lots of other options and concluded that incentives alone are not strong enough. Public funds and taxes in general are not reliable enough and building codes and bans uh, just won't be fast enough. Especially in Massachusetts, buildings represent a significant portion of the state's energy emissions. Most of the state's buildings that are gonna be here in 2040 or 2050 already exist. So retrofitting buildings and not relying just on new construction will need to occur to further curb greenhouse gas emissions. At the same time, equity must be addressed. Disadvantaged communities disproportionately have older housing with inefficient shelves and expensive heating sources, and thus uh, having the highest energy burdens. Those burdens must be reduced and a clean heat standard can be designed to support the state's energy equity goals alongside its global warming commitments. What do we mean by clean heat? The phrase clean heat can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, especially customers and fuel providers. Clean heat could be seen as an umbrella for a host of technology options that can reduce greenhouse gases, including weatherization, electrification such as heat pumps, heat pump water heaters, and other zero emission appliances, certain biofuels and renewable gases, low carbon district heating and geothermal systems, solar thermal, thermal and advanced wood heating, and renewable hydrogen. Any clean heat standard will need to measure its rate of success towards meeting climate goals. Meeting a greenhouse gas reduction goal would be measured by how many tons of emissions are reduced and credits will be given for the tons reduced. Greenhouse gas reductions can be based on a life cycle analysis of the emission reductions from the acceptable program options. Some of these options may pose concerns and may be viewed as costly or having other obstacles, and we understand that. Each jurisdiction needs to decide what options are best when it comes to generating clean heat standard credits. Who would be obligated to provide clean heat options to consumers? In general, it's fossil fuel providers 
that that should be the obligated parties. This includes natural gas distribution companies and home heating distributors that deliver fuels such as heating oil and propane. Those providers or obligated parties can meet the obligation by delivering efficiency, clean fuels, converting heating systems, or purchasing clean heat credits from other providers. Electricity providers may in the future also be included as obligated parties, but in the meantime, can also serve to generate credits to sell to the fossil fuel providers who are the principal obligated parties. How can the program be equitable for all customers? Many barriers for customers need to be thought about in advance to ensure that in particular, low income and overburdened communities benefit from a clean heat standard. For example, providing renters with options and encouraging landlords to upgrade their properties through incentives. Upgrading low income housing where insulation may be poor and heating systems old and reducing energy burdens by offering efficient appliances and heating systems. Designing an equitable program is critical for helping low and moderate income communities make progress in reducing energy and environmental burdens. That may mean that the program establishes separate goals for these communities, such as carve outs, like setting emission reduction goals specific to those communities, or offering different program incentives, and ensuring that communities and customers are involved in the design of the program and reap benefits from the start. How will a clean heat standard work? Administration of the clean heat standard is similar to other energy programs like renewables and efficiency. First, the regulating agency determines the rules of the road. What percentage reduction is required each year? which heating types and fuels qualify as clean heat options, and how the equity goals will be met. Then each year, the obligated parties will need to demonstrate that they have earned and retired enough clean heat credits to meet their share of the total statewide requirement. They can do this by taking actions themselves or by buying credits from another obligated party or from other clean heat providers, such as weatherization agencies or heating contractors. And as Nancy has already noted, provisions to ensure delivery of clean heat services to low and moderate income households will be built in from the beginning. The program administrators will adopt measures to ensure performance by obligated parties to deliver clean heat options to consumers in order to guarantee that the state's climate goals are achieved. This will mean developing methods to measure real reductions in greenhouse gas emissions from consumer locations. Since the goal of the clean heat standard is to reduce global warming pollution, performance is measured in tons of greenhouse gases reduced. And since we want to reduce energy bills and local pollution too, the clean heat standard focuses on actions taken in homes and businesses in Massachusetts, not by trading for carbon offsets that might occur in other places. How is the clean heat program flexible? Any clean heat program must be flexible to ensure it meets the state's goals and consumer needs. For instance, participation by customers should be voluntary. Clean heat credits can be generated by anyone taking action to reduce greenhouse gas, gases from fossil fuel use. Customers can own their clean heat credits and have the flexibility to decide how to best to use them. For example, transferring them to fuel providers, the obligated parties, selling them on the open market, or holding on to them for another day. Clean heat providers can offer a wide array of solutions to lower greenhouse gases and save customers money. Flexibility is key for customer enthusiasm and essential in reducing compliance costs for a clean heat standard, especially if the options to generate credits are numerous. In conclusion, 
There's a history of success with state initiated environmental and energy performance standard programs. These demonstrate the potential for a clean heat standard. Clean heat standards support diverse heating solutions, allow multiple delivery pathways, provide flexibility for those obligated to achieve emission reductions, and customer choices for reducing customers' energy use. To meet the Commonwealth's climate objectives, a clean heat standard can be an answer to bringing Massachusetts toward a clean energy future.